Hello, welcome back everybody. Um, let's fix the thing I did to make that uh, new streaming soon thing. Uh, before we get started, there we go. Let's put that back to what it was before. Uh, yes, so welcome back to some more Lola and the Pink Rabbit Pajamas game development. Um, looks like we have at least one new person with us today, so hopefully this is vaguely interesting. So I want to talk about something kind of exciting that's happened. So obviously we're really trying to keep like character count and stuff down. Some of that is going to have to be done later, like compression and stuff, but let's look at our text renderers. If I just restart the game for a second, you can see that we have the ability to, oh yeah, we have this issue where slimes exceeding like the bounds of the level crash the game. Uh, so if any of them try and go through one of these doorways, the game crashes. Uh, but you can see over her head, uh, Lola has like text and we can render the text and we can do stuff um, to it. There's also a little flickering at the moment. Um, but the text renderer basically uses a huge list of characters that represent each piece of text, uh, which we've looked at before. Uh, Supper Jerry likes the smiley. Oh, right, yeah. I wanted to make sure that I didn't get confused between rooms, so each room has, like, a different texture on the floor, so I can check that I'm in the room I think I'm in. Anyway, so every character has, um, every character that can be rendered as text, like the exclamation mark, is basically a load of zeros and ones. So if we were to take this and, uh, split it every three characters, you can actually see the exclamation mark in this, oops, in this code like this, so you can see there's like space on either side, there's a line down, a gap, and then another line, that's an exclamation mark. So we're using zeros and ones to store this information. I was thinking this is actually like quite a lot of, if we just go, I know there's a couple of comments in here, but if we just select all of this a second, you can see that we're using 1,588 characters just to define our text renderer. What if I told you that I realized that because this is basically binary, I can get those 1,500 odd characters down to 90 using Unicode. This is kind of cool. So um, it turns out that Unicode, I don't know if any of you have ever opened a file in a text editor that's not supposed to be opened in a text editor, like a PNG or something, you get a lot of gibberish like this. And the reason that that happens is because essentially the file is made of binary, but the uh, text editor interprets that binary as Unicode, so it just draws whatever character that binary happens to make. So if we reverse engineer that, we can actually store binary values as Unicode using a little script I made. Um, so this takes the original um, binary values um, and it basically converts it into a character code and then outputs that. Uh, you can see it here. Um, so it basically generates these output strings for us, uh, which is really cool because we save so much space um, and it just kind of looks kind of awesome as well. Um, interestingly, like this and this, they don't have a character associated to the, with them, I guess. Now I'm a little bit out of my depth here. They don't have um, a character associated with them with my font, I guess, but they technically have different IDs, like they have a different Unicode character code. So... That seemed really, really good until I realized that this um, this string, which is supposed to be 91 characters long because we have 91 characters in our renderer, this stuff here, there's 91 entries. When JavaScript looks at the length of it, it gives you a length of 96. Um, and this is because Unicode, among the many awesome slash weird things it does, because JavaScript sucks at um, Unicode, like it hasn't really implemented it very well, some of these characters are actually two characters on top of each other. <laughs> so a text editor sees one character and you can highlight it and it'll say it's one character, but it's actually like, it's two on top of each other, uh, which it sort of uses to build symbols. You'll see that with some um, with some emojis as well, like where you can choose like a, a family, like the family emoji, which has got uh, two parents and a child or something. That's actually a, I forget the correct term for it, but it's like a grouped character where it looks like one, um, but it's actually several characters like on top of each other. 
Uh, and as no answer says, that's a normal Unicode feature. I'm, I'm aware of this now. But this does mean that, unfortunately, some of our uh, characters, because they use a lot of ones, are quite a large number. So they end up being a Unicode value that takes up two characters instead of one. Um, so the, the renderer that I wrote off of camera, this thing here, is actually turning every every character into um, into one binary character. But the problem there is that essentially it's turning some of them into two, which means we can no longer just say that this is the first character, this is the second character, this is the third character, this is the fourth character, etc. Um, so what I'm going to have to do, but it still saves quite a bit of space, is just split each of these codes in half uh, by some... As I know some of them are different lengths to others. Um, like, I don't know, this one's quite short, the comma. Um, but we can say that the first X characters are the first Unicode character and then the second one. Uh, Annoying answer says, so you could use ASCII, which is one byte per character. I could use ASCII, which is one byte per character, but we run into the issue where ASCII only supports up to... Uh, I want to say FFFF. I think it 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 basically doesn't support numbers large enough for what we want to store, whereas Unicode does. Um, so I think we're going to halve each of these characters into uh, to be represented by two characters instead of one. So uh, it'll still be pretty short and compact, but I think it's going to be really handy. So today we can either work on that, uh, or I can do it off camera because it's just kind of changing the way that the text reader works. Or the other thing I kind of wanted to try today was you we, we looked at room darkening a while ago. We looked at how you can make um, rooms have like darkness and give Lola a torch that gives her like a, a radius of light around her. Um, I kind of want to have a go at adding torch brackets where if you have a torch in your inventory, which would be down here, you can walk up to it and place a torch and that will then keep that section of the room lit. Uh, I think that could be a fun thing to try. So I don't know what people feel like uh, me doing in the stream. Uh, I might stream this tomorrow as well, actually, because uh, I didn't do any work on it last week and I feel bad. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm kind of open to doing either one today. Um, by the way, this Unicode character encoding thing is probably going to work for our... Um, textures and our levels as well, which is going to be nice. We probably can't fit a level or a texture inside two Unicode characters, but we can uh, definitely shrink it down from the hex that, hexadecimal that we're currently using. So, yeah. No one's giving any opinions. Uh, one of them is going to involve working with numbers. One of them is going to involve me having to op uh, opening Photoshop and drawing some terrible torches. So <laughs> uh, you decide. I'm going to find where these slimes are being spawned. Uh, do I think I might be continuing Foxy Boxes? I do think I might continue Foxy Boxes. Um, I'm actually in the process of getting that ready to be restarted. I was going to start it this month, but now I'm moving house. I'm going to Stockholm. I'm moving to Stockholm um, from, from the UK at the end of this month and I'm so busy packing and um, and you know sorting out like legal stuff as to like moving and working abroad uh, that it's kind of a bad time at the moment so instead I'm hoping to start it in January. Hi Lewis welcome to the stream uh, but yeah Foxy Boxes is coming back D Duck and Noodle Soup have been poking me about it for ages as have viewers so I definitely want to get that started. Uh, we're going to stop spawning slimes for a bit because they're currently crashing the game until I fix these doors. That did not go very well. Is that literally because I got rid of the slimes? Apparently so. That's weird. Uh... Cannot set property dialogue of undefined. Hmm.
The slimes shouldn't currently be... I mean, that is a good suggestion. That's what I'm currently checking, whether the slimes are uh, being told to say something. But... Oh, yeah, one of the... One of the oh yeah entity I was telling the first slime which is the second entity in the entity array to say bloop, but that is no longer a thing. So there we go, found it. Um, so now we're not going to get crashes anymore from from our slimes. Um, I um, I added some code in the last stream to sort them by uh, by y height by the way, so they render in front of each other in the right order. There's some flickering, um, so I'm going to have to look into. A, a different way to do it, but I think somebody actually posted it on Twitter. Uh, okay, well, we've had one person say they want to do the torches, so I guess we'll give that a go. Um, yes, let me open Photoshop and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> um, let's have a go. Uh, let's see. We'll give it a... I don't... I think you can just about see this box in the stream. We'll give it a... Uh, 16 by 16 texture. I think most of our stuff is 16 by 16, except Lola, because I'm weird like that. Let's actually fit this better to what you can see. And then I can see the uh, stream chat as well. There we go. Okay, so let's, let's draw. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, the art side of things is something I kind of suck at. Uh, let's draw a torch. And then you can see how I import new textures into the game, if you didn't already know that. Bloop. Photoshop actually doesn't like drawing single pixels very much. I'm really tempted to just make this like a Minecraft torch now, um, which is basically just four different coloured, like, orange pixels here. But let's be a little more inventive than that. Bearing in mind we only have a total of 256 colours to work with here. Do you think the torches should be lit or unlit in the inventory? I'm kind of leaning towards unlit, partly because it's just easier to draw, but it might end up just looking like a uh, some kind of one of those bombs on sticks that you can throw. <laughs> instead it looks very uh, unassumingly torch like like a stick with, with a marshmallow yeah <laughs> Yeah, it does. Uh, we can always improve textures in the future, I tell myself desperately. That's a weird kind of greeny white. Doesn't really add much either in terms of shadow. Really not seeing much there. Hmm. Oh, one second, got to shut the door. If you make the marshmallow hot enough, it will glow. <laughs> yes, I suppose it could be a marshmallow on a stick that you set fire to. It would work as a very temporary torch, I guess. Hmm. Uh, well, that's going to do for a texture for now. <laughs> I guess. Uh, and we'll work with that. So we're going to save it as... Oh, we're in the right place already. Uh, Torch.png Yeah, that'll do. 
Then we have to go into uh, my where's my file? Uh, PNG to hex map, which is this thing. Choose the torch. Why not go more towards the Minecraft torch appearance, fire on a stick? Yeah, it's it's an option. Do you want to be carrying a burning torch on you? <laughs> um, we currently don't have a particle system for Lola, but I'd like one. So we can probably place some particles around the torch itself, but maybe we need a different texture when it's on the wall anyway. Uh, there's our torch. So this is... Oh, we've got missing colours. Uh, we have to define some new colours in our game. So that's going to have to go with our colours... Should be four colors. Already got that one. There's another one. These need to go into this file too. probably going to have one more colour that we're missing. No, we're not. Oh, I guess there's only three colours. Oh, that's right. Wait, one, two. I swear there's four colours in here, though. <laughs> Did I enter four? I did enter four. Okay, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, clearly. Um, so now we have this code, which we put in our textures array. Uh, currently those have no texture, which is why they're so short. And then we just do that. So now we should have torch, the torch texture in the game. Nice and simple, not. Uh, give it a comment, torch inventory. Uh, yep, that should hopefully not crash anything now. Yeah, we're good. Uh, so we don't actually really have an inventory system yet. So uh, let's actually, let's start by making the torch dark, uh, by making the room dark. Where even is that code anymore? People tell me I need to break this into separate files while I'm working on it so it's clearer. Let's try searching for light. Brightness, darkness. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, so the room darkness is currently just the same for every room. We don't have that as a setting per room. So I guess just for now, we'll set this to 1.5. Oh yeah, I was doing weird stuff with the, I was trying to do weird stuff with the lighting. Let's just make this like pretty much pitch black. Um, we've got redness, greenness and there's no blueness, though. I guess blue is just always zero. Uh, okay, so the idea is if we have... So this is drawing the tile and the size of the light source. Let's For now, let's get rid of that color stuff. So we're just going to... Gonna make just the redness for everything, I think. So this will no longer actually be red, it'll be white, but okay, there we go. It's a bit colder, you can see why it's not quite right for a torch, but yeah, so there's our opacity. So the size of this circle. We want it to be like tiny if, if Lola doesn't have a torch on her. So what value is that? Is that 80? What happens if I do 50? Did 
doesn't seem to change anything. That's opacity. Uh, distance two times one. Nope. What happens if we make that six? Ten? Zero? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> nice fog though. Huh. What was that before? Three, I think. Uh, sixty. I feel like this number is supposed to change it. But it seems to be changing. Uh, I think I know what it is. This is just supposed to be zero. There we go. So 50, 1,000, 100. Yeah, okay, so if we don't have a torch, we want this to be like, a, not that small. <laughs> <clears throat> A little bigger. So if if Lola doesn't have a torch, I'm thinking we just give them this sort of really small shadow uh, when they go into a dark room like this. And uh, so you can just about see everything that's close to you, but enemies can still surprise you from a distance because you can't really see them. Kind of like the Pokemon games, but with a more faded circle. And then if you have a torch in your inventory, it will increase. So um, what we kind of want to do is if Lola dot has torch, which isn't a property yet, but you know, we'll say um, room dark, uh, no, uh, uh, light, Lola brightness. <laughs> Lola brightness equals uh, 30 by default. And then if Lola has a torch, Lola brightness becomes uh, 60. I'm curious if this is going to error. No, it won't, because it's just the property doesn't exist, so I guess it just returns false automatically. That's nice. So, we don't. We don't have an inventory system yet. Um, I guess that's a property of Lola. So I guess what we actually want to do is instead of Lola dot has torch, we want um, we want to check if an array called Lola dot inventory contains a torch. Uh, can we do this? Well, that seems to have just thrown a proper error. <laughs> uh, I guess we need to give the the uh, property without the torch inside. Where is Lola defined? Here we go. So, right, move left, dialog offset, walk speed, new property, inventory, will be an array of things. So we'll give her a torch. <clears throat> and now it works. But if we take the torch away, is it going to error? Hmm. 
No. Okay, I just needed the inv inventory tag, I guess. Uh, but if we give her a torch, it's still not giving her a bigger room, so... I'm gonna get rid of some of these markers, because... We want new markers. Lola.inventory torch. Uh, you know what it is. I think the torch is actually this because it's the first item in the inventory. Uh, so load inventory dot torch would make it an object. Um, hmm. I guess we just need to see whether it contains the string torch. You need to replace the value and opacity to lower the brightness, right? Oh, that's a good point. Didn't fix the problem, but you were right, that needed adding too. <clears throat> Can I just, does Lola return as a property? It does, lola.inventory is an array containing torch. Um, what does dot torch give us? Undefined, makes sense. Uh, torch, undefined, right. I've been running a lot of PHP recently and I've forgotten what the JavaScript, um, JavaScript for uh, contain string is string pause index of that's the one Okay, well that seems to have given her a bigger torch now, but let's make that like 80. Okay, cool. So she has a torch. I think there's a way of doing this. Uh, instead of greater, greater than minus one, I think you can literally put a tilde here, which means, it, I don't remember what it means, but I think it works. <laughs> it's like, Um, oh, no nines has just posted the same thing in the chat, I guess, that I just did. But yeah, um, it means to return, return false unless the value is not minus one. Return false for minus one, return true for everything else is what the tilde is for in JavaScript, which is really handy for this kind of string searching. Um, Undertale 3, ah, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, okay, so if we remove the torch from her inventory again. It gets smaller. Okay, so we can give her a torch. Now we need to render the torch in her inventory if she has one. That should be fairly simple. Uh, so first we load the texture. This is all the setup stuff. Then we draw the GUI. So her health is here, so after the health we should cycle through the inventory. How am I programming this game? It's in JavaScript, on the canvas, for the browser, using Notepad++. Does that answer your question? Uh, okay, so it looks... See, the annoying thing now is that I think what I've actually done here is uh, inventory is going to have to look like this. Torch, flashlight, uh, pills, whatever. Um, but we want an array. So unless you can do index of on an array, that would be handy. 
um, JS index of array. Does that just work? Apparently, you can, in which case this will still work. So I should be able to still have it as an array. That's that's cool. Uh, so what I was going to do, oh yeah, I wanted to, under processing the GUI, um, render inventory. So what I'm thinking of doing is whatever's in the inventory, it will just, that's beautiful. Uh, that is definitely how you code. Um, we're just going to draw every item in like a line, I guess, for now. So for lola.inventory.length. Am I using i yet? I think I'm outside of any i loops because there's one right here. So for i equals zero, i is less than lola.inventory.length plus plus la la la. So for everything in the inventory, Now here's the question. Um, oh, sorry, uh, Geo Geo. Oh, people are talking a lot. Uh, wow. Hang on. Uh, Oliver Sutton says something. Lola.inventory.filter. In is that better than uh, index of in terms of performance or something? It looks kind of more PHP ish, but. It could be in JavaScript too. Uh, Gal says, Hey Sparks, the channel only has two streams of this series except the ongoing stream. Where can I find earlier streams? I'm afraid earlier streams were done on, on Mixer slash Beam and are no longer available. So sorry about that. Um, and then Gal says, Modern JavaScript post 2017 supports string.includes. So I could do string.includes. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to start making games, what programming language should I learn? And then you're wondering what an array is. Okay, so an array is a collection of things. So uh, this is an array. Uh, arrays are represented in JavaScript and many languages using a square bracket. You can see the closed square bracket is here. So everything inside these two square brackets are things separated by commas. So uh, you can see a comma at the end of, I just pointed at my screen, <laughs> comma at the end of each of these lines, which shows that where each thing inside the array starts and ends. And uh, in this case, we have an array of arrays because this is the first array in the array and it contains a list of comma separated things. Uh, I would suggest if you literally have not programmed ever at all, um, and you want to kind of get a grasp of the kind of thinking required, I would heavily recommend Scratch. It's a um, it's a programming language that focuses less on uh, like typing and code, and more on the kind of thinking required for coding. Uh, it's how I started programming. If you go to scratch.mit.edu, they have amazing resources. The website is amazing. I used to be a community moderator for them, which is why I extol them so much. But uh, it's really good for just getting started, and you can make games really quickly with it as well. If you're... The thing with C-sharp is it's used in the games industry. It's a powerful language, but it takes some getting into. Like, there's a lot of stuff to learn to start with. Like, something like JavaScript is a lot friendlier to, to get into. Um, C-sharp has a lot more back history you kind of need to learn about how the language works before you can actually start to get a game working. So I'd probably recommend Python if you want to like to start learning how to code straight from the code scratch if you really want to just uh, play around and make games very quickly and have a bit of fun uh, and learn how how to think as a programmer those are probably be my suggestions but everybody has their own personal preference okay so anyway what was i doing uh drawing the inventory right so this is the question now. When we draw the inventory, we're gonna we're cycling through our inventory. Here, I definitely need to break this file into more stuff into separate files. Um, I'm gonna search through every string inside the inventory. But what I'm gonna now have to do is because our torch texture is actually referenced as a um, as a as value twenty four. 
is that binary or is it looks like that's a decimal number so texture 24 um, so we're gonna have to say if item equals torch draw texture 24 or in the inventory we could literally write 24 as the item like this in which case we just draw a torch and refer to the torch as 24 which means that it's basically an item with an ID that matches its texture <laughs> I worry that this is going to come back to bite me in the future uh, down here. So instead of looking for torch, we look for 24. Which we may have to store as a string. I don't know if you can do index of 24. Looks like you can. Okay, interesting. So now what we can do is we can just render everything by its ID, I suppose. So, we're going to draw image, which is the function I created for this. The image is um, lola.inventory um, i, the i -th thing in the inventory, and then what the heck is health x is that that must be the health oh right uh the x is how far across the screen obviously uh so we want to draw it at uh probably like health x is four uh 16, 32 so but probably around 40 uh 32 about 36. Let's draw it at x36. 218. We should hopefully get it. We've got a slime. Okay, I guess 24 was the um the hex value, not the binary value then. It's also too low, but we'll sort that in a second. Uh, oh, lots more conversation going on. Uh, it's interesting that YouTube suggested this stream to me. The last videos I watched of your channel were the Canvas experimentation two years ago. Oh, yeah, I did a Canvas game ages ago, didn't I? Uh, and then some discussion about something I don't know. Yeah, okay. So... What's 24 in decimal? <laughs> 24 hex to decimal is... A decimal... What? What is this? 24... Is... A hundred? No, it's 36. I'm trying to read this table. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, just type OX24. 36. That's really handy. Thank you. Uh, really good idea. 27 is half heart. You messed up indexes somewhere. Twenty twenty seven. Twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one. Oh yeah. I go back down to twenty. That's why. Twenty seven. Twenty eight, twenty thirty, thirty one. Thirty two. Thirty three. Thirty six. Um I'm gonna have slightly shot myself in the foot here because sometimes the array like I'm storing a lot of information in hex but obviously JavaScript refers to arrays in decimal so weird things can happen uh, so that 36 uh, what's what was the final value of that texture <laughs> it was 36 so our inventory should contain 
36. Hmm. Is the wrecked only restriction still in effect? Um, technically. So what I wanted was to only use the draw rectangle function um, to draw things on my stage. However, it turns out that if, like it's really dark right now, you can't really see, but all of these, all of these tiles on the floor, originally I was making it draw every single tile, every pixel of every tile, every frame, and it just did not like that at all. It was crashing, it was lagging so hard. Um, so what I do now is I draw the textures, I draw each tile, including every sprite, to its own to its own hidden canvas. And then I stamp the canvas onto this canvas to draw up the level. Uh, so it's kind of like holding the textures in memory. Uh, well, I guess it is holding the textures in memory, um, and that's the only way I can actually make this function. So I'm sort of using some stamping as well, but uh, I'm still pretty much just drawing with rectangles. I'm not allowed to draw lines. If I wanted to draw a line with an angle, I would have to um, write a function that calculates which pixels to fill to draw the line, if that makes sense. Um, inventory of 36 is giving me nothing, though. 35, 36, 37, error, 36, is there something wrong with our texture definition? Oh, we don't have the uh, ending information, uh, I forgot to add that, so it's texture, uh, sol whether it's solid or not, and whether it can be interacted with so that's two zeros on the end I thought I could just leave that up. yeah I can I can just leave it off though if if it's not being rendered as a item so I'm not sure what's wrong is it still using set interval We'll switch it to request animation frame later, uh, plus a system which uh, adjusts the interval depending on um, actual frame rate. Up. I don't know why this texture isn't drawing. So, twenty seven would give us a heart. That's drawing. But 36 is not. Is there a problem with my texture? Oh, I didn't know that about the uh, request animation frame. Thank you. Uh, huh. It's not drawing the torch. Oh. oh hang on. Draw image is not a function I created that's that's the thing I'm using for stamping the textures onto the thing so it's actually referring to the canvas of the image not the texture array itself but that should still give me the right ID Hmm. It should still be referred to by the same number. I'm a little confused. This is not where I thought I was going to get stuck.
definitely has data in it. 00F, 00F, the first two lines are blank, that makes sense. Then we have uh, blank for 006, then we have three pixels of C1. How do you convert hex back to decimal though? Is that 0D? Nope. I know binary is 0B. Oh, of course, uh, 193. Oh, it's 2C, that's why. 28. Uh, Color 28. 28, 13, 16, 17, 18, 19, uh, 1A, 1B, 1C. So it's that color there. So the color is defined. It's not erroring when it's drawing the texture it's the texture definitely has like contents it should should be drawing and we are rendering it after the hearts which do appear plus if we change the texture something else appears so there's something wrong with the texture um the 7 comma 7 it's a little long-winded but 28.2 string 16 yeah uh, seven comma seven. I don't see a seven comma seven. If I delete this row. It should draw the torch in one of these slots, but it didn't. Hmm. Line 163. Um, no, the default is 16 by 16. You can see it's not used here. If it's a 16 by 16 texture, which this is, then it just assumes that. If it's a different texture size, then um, you have to define it. Uh, see you, Cripple Junior. Thanks for watching. I'm a little bit stumped. Let's... The slime was drawing fine as well, number 24. <laughs> yeah, draws fine. Uh, number 24 is also a 16 by 16 texture. Hmm. Use the Chrome debugger to see what is passed around. Here's a wild suggestion. Let's take the texture of the slime that we know works and put it in the texture of the torch to see whether that's the problem. That opened a new tab, let's try that again. Nope, still not drawing the slime. Oh, I accidentally duplicated a line. Now, okay, so the texture is definitely the issue. Uh, 
uh, because we can draw the slime in that location, it's just this texture is drawing nothing. Sources, select a line to set a breakpoint. Thing is, I don't think it's really erroring. Like, it, is, it isn't erroring. Um, you think I should set a, a break on line 173? The thing is, it's not It's not a question of, like, a breakpoint. We can't stop here because this line isn't... I, I, maybe, maybe a breakpoint would stop if that line is red, like, referred to. 173. Is that how you make a breakpoint? How do I reload? If I just refresh, does it? It does stop. Okay, so it. Oh, it stopped at the very. So that's. Wait. Why did it stop at 183? Um, the sprite is generated as an. As an off. As a, as a, it's like, it's not added to the DOM, it's just a potential object. Um, so, load texture. So here it is, uh, create an element of canvas. And then it basically just loops through all of the textures, rendering them onto the canvas. That's weird. Now it's not rendering the... Whoa! Oh, right, I changed the height of this. <laughs> I wonder where the GUI had gone. There we go. Hmm. I've used this this program bef that I wrote before without an issue to convert textures.
um, I don't think I defined a body because I was saving space. We do have a body. There's our textures. Okay, um, the torch is just not there. You can see these one, two, three, four are the untextured doors. And then there's no torch. Hmm. Hmm. I don't see a problem with the texture definition though. Hmm. Six, then three C ones, that's the top of the torch. One zero six. I don't know. It's it's got code for the for the torch in there. That doesn't help. That doesn't help because it's not being drawn. Hmm. <laughs> What happens if we just use half his texture? Would it draw this half? Nope. Does it all also go the other way? Try to see if it convert it back. No, it doesn't. I mean, uh, why? Why would I need to? I've, the, the game itself is the is the deconverter. Um, hmm. Let's try changing zero zero to zero one. It's drawing that. You can see it down here. One two three. One two three. One two three. It's possible that the brown So it's it's rendering it's rendering the transparent texture fine. It doesn't help that um, this color is basically white, which is making it difficult to see. Maybe the brown is the issue. It's 
let's just give us two full lines of color. Yep, that's right. Then this should give us seven pixels of that color. It stops about there. Then we have two C1s, which is a kind of, that's the white of the torch. And then six more transparents, but it looks like it's filling the whole line again. And uh, not six more, sorry. Actually, that's a good point. We have on this line, we have, so the first line has 16, the second line has 16, and the third line has got seven. Eight, uh, fifteen, I think. Seven, seven plus seven is fourteen plus two is sixteen. That's the correct length. However, that's that's two C. Are we on two C? I thought we were on. I thought I was looking at C one. Once this goes to Unicode, this is going to be impossible to puzzle out. Three, two, three, one, two, three, and then that is causing the problem, I think. So that's texture 2C for two pixels. But I don't think we're on 2C. I think we're on C1. So I think my texture generator is messing something up here. Um, Yeah, this is one C, which is it, one C, we've got C1, or we've got 2C, which we're nowhere near yet. Does, which makes me wonder whether my PNG to hex map has too many. Yeah, here's, ah, we have a load of textures in here that aren't defined in Lola, uh, because I was messing with some other colors earlier. That's the problem. If I just copy order this again, we have a discrepancy between the two color lists. Oops. Try again. That was stupid. Uh -huh. So now we change the texture out for the new one with the correct values. This is the wrong file, that's why I can't find it. Ah. Torch. That took a unfortunate amount of time. Okay, I see what the problem was now though. God damn it. He looks a bit big. Um, it's, I mean, these are, what, seven pixels high each, these hearts? Or eight? I also noticed that Lola no longer thinks she has a torch. What did I break? 36.
There we go. Hmm. Okay. Well. Fixed it. The torch is there. Not really sure where to put this in the inventory, to be honest. Could fit under the hearts, but just can I render this at minus one? Because that's where it needs to go. Oh, I have an even width torch with an odd width heart above it. That looks weird. Now I kind of want to redraw the torch to have to have an odd width. All the hearts to have an even width. Hmm. Anyway, she has a torch. Um So let's Let's try adding a torch on a wall. Which we should be able to do okay-ishly. Let's get the stone wall top texture. With a torch on it. Torch wall top, I guess. Doesn't really matter what we call it, it's uh, not actually used in the game. This texture should have all of the colours already. Oh, it's a big texture, okay. Then that gets put into our texture list. Uh, it's 16 by 16 and it cannot be walked through and it cannot and it can be interacted with so that's solid and then the interaction code will be one three two four so the interaction code is five. And then we need to actually add that to our uh, to our room. So let's go to our level designer. Oh, we have to define the new texture in the level designer as well. I need to get them all reading from the same source, really. Uh, I think I have some off-camera work to do here. Level designer. Level designer. Door top. Okay. Uh, what do we call it? Torch wall top dot PNG. Okay. Uh, so we our first room. Actually, this is room seven. Uh, room seven has a door at the top, the right, the left, and the bottom. Okay. 
give it a top door. A. Oh, that's not right. And a bottom door bottom. Uh, is the game being a singular file important? Because if not, you should you could massively simplify the Unicode stuff by literally making a binary file with the code loads. It is going to be one file, uh, or it should. Basically, it's about saving space. So. One file means you don't have to reference any other files, is the thinking. Uh, we're going to add a torch on the wall texture here. Okay. Hopefully that level loads in okay. I've had a few issues with the level builder still because it's quite new. Uh, that is... Room seven, zero, uh, well, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Slightly concerned that that's, oh right, we had a load, we had smiley faces on the floor, didn't we? There's our torch on the wall, which for some reason isn't rendering its back texture. What? Hey? <laughs> That's really weird. It didn't tell me there were any um any missing colors. It's clearly got the colors there. Um I think Maybe I copied the wrong code into the into Lola. Uh, let's see. I think I accidentally copied the exact same code as for the other torch. Or something. There we go, now it has a background. Uh, we can't walk through it, that's good, it's solid. Uh, so let's let's see about interacting with it now. Um, the interesting thing is currently my interact code is um, designed for the tile to be stepped on instead of being next to where you are. So we may have to make some changes. Draw stage. Okay. Process entities. Process interactive tiles. Here we go. If the current entity is Lola. And the current... So we get the current tile code. And then if the current tile's code is zero, greater than zero and less than five, that means that it's a door. But... Even though we can do this, we're not actually stood on the torch, we're stood below it. So our two options are to have a special tile that looks just like the floor, but is actually a different tile, just text to look like the floor. Um, I love the fade you get on the rabbit ears because of the uh, the way that the fading works, that's cool. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we have a separate tile directly underneath the torch, which is the actual interactive tile. Or we have to check to either side of Lola as well. Um, so if the tile... 
above Lola. <laughs> We'll log that. Nope. Uh, maybe it's plus one, not plus 16. Oops. Nope. We did give it a tile uh, interact code, right? Yeah, a five. Your level designer could really use an import feature to import an already generated level code. What's the if true doing there? If true doing where? Oh, I think that's because if you're talking about the rendering entities, or it's the, the processing entities, um, yeah, here. Basically, we used to not process entities while you were going through a door, so the entities would completely vanish um, as soon as the, uh, you were changing rooms, but we wanted to change it so that uh, they would uh, continue to to render while moving. And I guess that's left there from me not being sure whether it worked it, because I used to say if not changing rooms, if room changing equals false, basically. Uh, but... I think we're now drawing the entities with the camera offset. But we're not. I'm not sure why it's there. I think it's there because I wasn't sure what I was doing with it yet. <laughs> oh, I added to X instead of Y. Yes, you are. You are right. Still not saying anything though. Oh, I think it's actually minus y because the yeah because the zero is at the top. It's kind of weird because if you think about it like a graph, zero zero is down here, but on a canvas, zero zero is up here. Anyway, we can now detect the torch. I don't know whether I like the fact that we're going to have to have four separate tile checks. Um, I wonder whether it would be simpler to have a copy of this texture, but um, make it an interactive tile that's just placed next to a torch. Not sure yet, but anyway, let's let's try creating a second light source at the location of the torch. Um, So now we're going to have to have a list of light sources instead of just centering on Lola. So here's our draw darkness shading. Um, so for each, each of these squares that works for lighting, we currently just use Lola's X and Y to work that out, but instead we're going to have to cycle through all the light sources, work out the distance to each of those light sources, and add them, and cap them at, uh, or subtract them, I guess. Um... 
Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the other thing is that we need to... I'm assuming that once we light a torch in a room, we want that to stay lit. Uh, even if we leave the room and come back, right? Which means we're going to have to store this as part of the part of the stage object. Um, we actually don't have the ability to store um, monsters per stage yet either. So these stages are going to have to have um, entity and other like references attached to them, which can be, they don't have to be stored, they can be generated, um, they don't have to be stored at the start of the game, rather they can be kind of generated afterwards. Interactable tiles could specify relative coordinates of where the tile can be activated from, otherwise you're going to end up with lots of uh, duplicated textures. This is true. Um, uh, I guess... In which case, we will have to check uh, all five tiles then. But that might actually take less space than another texture definition. Because textures take up quite a few characters to store. Like these are textures up here. It, one texture does take up quite a bit of space. So we might actually find that checking four tiles or five tiles is smaller. Uh, especially if we find a neat way of doing it. Take the closest light source. Then we have to calculate the closest light source, though. Um, where's my thing? I did a thing. Did I do that on my laptop, or do I have it here? One second. Hmm. I want to see if I can find it, because it was, it was to do with light stuff. I think it might be on my laptop. Yeah, I think it is. Um, never mind then. But I've basically done something very similar to this, but it actually blended colours as well uh, for different light sources, just as an experiment. Uh, okay, well... part of the tiles definition but the the thing is the tiles aren't objects tiles are textures with a little bit of tiles are tiles is an ar area of textures or canvases and so you can't like the tiles themselves don't have any kind of code you can't assign you can't assign a you can't assign code to a tile, or you can you can only assign code to an entity with the current system I have written, which means that the entities need to be in charge of basically interrogating which tile they're on. That's this um, uh, this um, environment location thing. This is a function I wrote, which basically calculates the uh, the location of the current tiles texture in the array or like so it'll return a number telling you where in t in the textures list the object the tile is which means that if you want to check a rounded entity you have to physically check the tile locate the tile location for each one actually i suppose if you where's the process interactive tiles actually come to think of it i think to detect to check check the tile above instead of checking doing this again you could do a uh, current tile minus 16 question mark because the current tile minus one would be here the current tile plus one would be here so the current tile minus 16 i think would be above you Let's try that. Oh no, no, because when we call the tile, we're actually getting the uh, extra information about the tile as well. So we're gonna have to call it every time anyway, which is what we were doing with the minus 16 there. Um, so what we're doing here is we're pretending that Lola is 16 blocks higher than she is or 16 blocks further 
up in the wire than she is, but we could also have just done uh, that whole thing minus 16 if we wanted to. Um, you can assign values, texture solid interaction code, propose texture solid interaction code, relative interaction x, relative interaction y, interaction width, interaction height. Uh, you could, uh, but the um, that may become come in handy later. But right, my point is that for processing interactive tiles, we're going to have to look all around the entity, unless we cycled through ev for every entity we cycled through every tile to see whether the interact uh, x y width and height caused them to intersect i guess in which case an interactive tile over here could be triggered by lola when it, if its width is like 100 or something yeah i think that we need to actually get around to defining entities and other like uh, non-tile objects per stage because now we have an issue with light sources where they should be defined by stage. Uh, what I'm going to do is just for now we're not going to we're going to make them not respect the zone you're in but oh, man, i'm getting so lost in my own code here here we go torch um we're going to lights do i call it light sources Light sources. I have no idea what that coordinate is. <laughs> um, let's just say ten ten for now and put it in the right place later. Um, if Index of Can I int can I do this? That would be cool. No way is this gonna work. This looks so stupid. You could observe uh, also remove the interaction stuff from tiles and move it to entities as well, but I kind of like how specific tiles have an interaction associated with it directly. Hmm, yeah. I have to think about it. If if we have in, if, if interactive tile information is stored on the entity and the entity checks all tiles in the level, then for every every frame, every entity would have to interrogate the level code to get a list of all of the tiles in the level and their location, then interrogate the texture array for every tile in the level in order to work out whether it's an interactive tile or not, then inter then interrogate the properties of a tile if it's found to see whether it matches which is going to be quite a lot of calculation every frame if you have several entities in the game right um interesting I have to think about that I want to see whether our light sources are a 364. Huh?
Oh, I, have, I typed an S here by accident. Uh, 366. I want to see whether our uh, light source array grows. It looks like it only added it once. That's great. Okay. So, process light sources. Capacity, minimum distance to. Cycling through all our light sources. Um, capacity plus equals. This would be adding to the opacity based on distance. For now, let's just ignore Lerlo and just use the light source. Um, math capacity math min distance to, and then instead of this Lerlo x, we do uh, light sources k zero and light sources. K one and then the oh the brightness of the light source needs to be defined as well. Darkness, uh okay. So we actually need an extra value in here. Um, brightness of, let's just say 50. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Distance to light sources K zero, light sources K one, I four J four, light sources K two darkness. Not sure why that's gone green. Um as because our fill style is still black, like we're ignoring this stuff, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> we can still walk around as well. Like, you can see the torch thing goes up when I walk up to it, and when I walk down, it stops, and when I walk up, it starts again. We're still walking around. It's just everything is green. The truth behind the game Lola was in front of a green screen the entire time. Yep. Hmm. I don't know why that is happening. Out of interest, if we set the room darkness to 0.8. Does it become a tinted green? Nope, it goes full on green. It's not having any of that. That's really weird. Um, now it's fine. Something about this opacity thing is causing a problem. Math.min. So it chooses the lower of the two. The room darkness or the distance to light sources K zero. The light source should be appearing over here somewhere. Um, because it's 10 and 10 in the X and Y.
Have I mistyped light sources? Don't think so. We're not already using K, are we? We're already using IJ, but no K. It is possible that I am, I defined K as something like an idiot earlier. But I'm using K for looping elsewhere, so it should be okay. Okay, get it? Uh huh. Math distance to light source K zero light source. Okay, one. Let's try just physically entering those numbers. That worked. So something with our array is wrong, I guess. Uh, okay, now we just need to add the two or subtract the two, I'm not sure which. Well, that's not right. That's also not correct. Um, the opacity needs to be Somebody said somebody said something else about it instead of adding them or subtracting them you just choose the closest someone said Um, let's say if that is less than opacity Then we set the opacity to that for that tile. Hey, hey, there we go. Um, we can probably instead of doing that calculation twice, we can just say temp opacity. Okay, and now we just have to work out why we couldn't define light sources. Hang on, let's just uh, k equals zero, k, k plus plus. Console dot log light sources k zero. One and two. Undefined comma. What the hell? It, is it considering it a string? One, 
one zero comma five Uh, I appear to have crashed Chrome. I've crashed Chrome. <laughs> Great. <laughs> hmm. Apparently I was doing a lot of console logging there. I may have to physically close that tab. Yeah, there we go. Um, well, that's weird. It should be an array of arrays. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I'm not pushing it. I'm just setting it. Uh... Where's my code gone? That should be dot push, I think. Well, it hasn't complained about that. So it might now be adding it multiple times. Oh yeah, yeah, it's adding it multiple times. We need a way of only uh, adding it once. But we should now be able to uh, draw the light source in the right place. Um, and then we need to set that to, like, whatever that location is, which I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to say 128-ish, a bit more than Close. Should probably work out what it what it actually is, to be honest. That's some weird uh, color blending there. It feel it looks looks a little odd to me, but eh, it kind of works. Um, I guess this should probably be eight, uh, and then mm -hmm. that looks to be right. Um, I guess it'll be hundred and. What's the closest multiple of 2 to 150? Well, I mean a uh, power of 2. Multiple of 16, that's what I mean. Hundred and twenty-eight plus 16, or 8. 136? That doesn't seem right though. Maths is wrong. 
Uh, it's 16 wide. 16 sixteens. 256. So the midpoint is 256. That's here. Plus 16 plus 8. Two hundred and eighty. That seems too much. <laughs> hmm. Well, anyway, uh, apart from a particle system, we seem to have working torchlight. Uh, the only problem is that there's technically like a hundred odd torches in that location. 152. Because we can't... That looks pretty centred. We can't tell. We can't tell when. Oh, that looks nice though. I like that. If you light all four corners, it should pretty much light up the room. Like the corners... The edge corners might be dark. We could even change the room brightness when all four are lit or something to be a little bit less dark. Um, hmm. Well. We also need to check that Lola has a torch when she walks up to that torch, come to think of it. remember the torch ID all the time now. That's annoying. 36. So if we take away her torch... She should no longer be able to light the torch. Let's just check she still can. Uh, oops. After that change. Yep, she can still light the torch. Let's remove her torch. No longer renders in the corner. Tiny circle around her. And yep, looking good. Nice. Uh, cool. Torch. Another torch. It's kind of nice. Does that... Do you think that looks right? It's almost like it gets darker before it gets lighter again. I think that's I think that's kind of wrong, but hey, uh, we've been streaming for a little while now, so maybe I'll call it here. I think I need to do a lot of like inventory reman like remanagement so that light sources can belong to like I think entities need to belong to uh, stages um, before we can really continue. I should also fix the textures for the uh, top and bottom do bottom doors, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think I think we'll call it here. We've got enough, some interesting stuff done today. We have the ability to add things to an inventory. We have torches, terribly drawn torches. They're kind of growing on me actually. They're not terrible, but they could be better. Uh, we also need a particle system for these torches so that we can see them burning prettily. And probably actually have a better t texture for when they're on the wall. Something smaller. Uh, but yeah, we'll call it there for today. Thank you very much for watching and for your uh, suggestions and uh, help with debugging as always. I guess I'll see you all next time.